Hi, morning everyone. This is JP Tong. I'm now at Gachar Forest Retreat, Malaysia. And today is day 41 of Mindful Morning Meditation. How is everyone doing this morning? I hope, I hope all of you had a good uh, week and um, I'm sure most of you would have been going back to work already, but um, I'm still here in Kachar First Retreat, okay? So, um, well, I guess we will wait a few more seconds for everyone to tune in and as we're waiting, we can again do some stretching. Yep. We can do some stretching because today, as you can see, I'll be using the Tibetan singing bowl again. Hi, King Hoi. Hi, Kopdwen. Good morning. Hi, Karin. Good morning. As we're waiting, please do a bit of stretching. Okay. Hi, morning, Iman. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in again. Okay, so let's do a bit of stretching so that we don't get any pins and needles. Hope everyone had a good rest last night. Um, hi, Carmen. And uh, hi, Wubi, morning. Wow, Carmen is early this morning. <laughs> Are you working today, Carmen? Hi, waiting. Good morning, King Hoi. Hi, Christina. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, we're just stretching as we're waiting for everyone to tune in. Yeah. You can stretch your legs a little bit because that's where we get, tend to get pins and needles. JWU, hi, good morning, JWU. Is this the first time that you're tuning in? Hi, morning, Sharon. Pastor Hani, good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, we'll wait a few more seconds and then we shall start with the nine round breathing meditation. Uh, Carmen says, nope, just happened to be up. Okay, good. Thank you very much for, for tuning in, Carmen. Uh, we are doing the singing bowl meditation, so it will be quite fun. Yep. Hi, May. Morning. Okay, I think we're pretty much there. Let's start with the uh, nine-round breathing meditation. Here we go. Okay, so please get yourself seated comfortably. All right, so left palm out, thumb down. Wrap your thumb into a fist and put your fist, left fist under your right armpit, right hand on your left nostril, breathe in slowly. And breathe out. Breathe in. Visualize the white light as you breathe in and when you breathe out, visualize dark smoke. Breathe in again. And breathe out. Remember to breathe from your tummy so you fill your entire lungs with the oxygen and the healing white light. Change hands. Right hand, thumb down, wrap your thumb, put your fist under your left armpit, left hand on your left nostril, on your right nostril and breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take your time. Breathe in again.
and breathe out. Both hands on your thighs, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in again. And breathe out. Great, and we're done. So that was very good to again ground our body and our mind because it's been one week. So I'm not sure if all of you have been meditating. If not, this will be a good session to catch up. So hi, morning, uh, Nancy and uh, Jacinta. So uh, I hope all of you also, uh, you know, write about, uh, write in your gratitude journal. Um, Again, that's a very, very good way to keep the routine up so that we will always be looking out for positive things in our lives that we are so blessed with. Yeah, it's a very good training to train our mind to be more positive because we do have a tendency to always compare and always um, not, as, you know, not happy with what we are blessed with because if you have been reading the news, many people are very much affected by this uh, COVID-19 lockdown and um, yeah and we're blessed to to even be able to sit here and meditate and um, yeah with, uh, with with each other so that is a blessing yeah hi Ben good morning uh, Cass hi Cassandra hi thank you for tuning Cassandra and, and Emily good morning Zin Khoi any class on Hari Raya Monday Monday and Tuesday off day oh really there's a uh, the two days, uh, I will, I will, I will make the, the announcement. But for now, there's nothing scheduled yet. So, but definitely tomorrow we will have another session. For that's for sure. Okay, so look out for the announcement. Okay, so uh, we will start with the singing bowl. Okay, so for those who've just tuned in and you've not joined me before, uh, this is will be. You'll be meditating and focusing on the sound of the uh, singing bowl, yeah? So as I'm hitting it, you can, again, you can sit in this position, but always make sure that if you're sitting on the floor, have a cushion, uh, you know, for you to sit on, but sit at the edge of the cushion so that your buttocks are propped up like that. And that actually helps. It actually helps the spine I mean the uh, posture so that you're straight and always have tilt your chin down a little bit. So just visualize a string pulling this way. Yeah, so your spine is, is straight up like that. But of course we always relax our shoulders. Yeah, and we find a center as we rock forward and backwards so that we don't lean too much on our limbs and then that's where we get pins and needles. Yeah, and, if we, and try not to lean too much towards the back because otherwise, you know, you have a strain on your back. So just find that, that um, equilibrium, okay? Then, um, yeah, so for this meditation specifically, you can, you can close your eyes. Because before that, when we were doing the single pointed meditation, I was saying that you can, you know, that it's best that you just look downwards 45 degrees so that you don't get distractions, you know, uh, at, from ahead of you, and again, you don't fall asleep, okay? Because when we close our eyes and meditate, there's a tendency that we do fall asleep, and that's not the point of meditation, okay? So focus on the sound as I hit it. I'll be hitting it, and I will be doing this, okay? I'll be, I'll be rubbing it like that, and there'll be a very low humming sound, so I'll bring the singing bowl to my, to my body mic so that you can actually hear it. So what you do is you focus on the sound, okay? Focus on the sound, 
So instead of focusing on the breath, which is what we did, you focus on the sound, okay, and relax. Focus on the sound and relax, okay? We will do that for a few more sessions. Then after that, I will walk, I will, I will teach you how to, how to do certain visualizations later, okay? But for now, just focus on the sound, all right? And whatever happens, happens. So just focus on that. And again, if your thoughts are rising, emotions are rising, watch it and then focus back on the sound, okay? And the sound is actually very, very healing because it's made up of uh, seven metals. This is, a, this is an authentic Tibetan singing bowl, okay? Um, it's not readily available in Malaysia. We, in Kachara, we have to, we actually sourced it in uh, Nepal and uh, yeah, and we imported it ourselves, okay? With their different sizes. I'm trying to make arrangements to get a few sizes here so that I can actually play different sizes of the singing bowls and they will have uh, different sounds, okay? And that's very, very soothing, okay? This is called sound bathing meditation, okay? So, uh, so we will do that for 15 minutes. Then after that, we will, we will proceed to sharing our gratitude and I'll be answering a few questions. Okay, dokes. Okay, here we go. Okay, no more questions. All right, so 15 minutes. Right now it's 9.40. Okay, great. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Focus on the sound. Focus on the sound, watch your thoughts. Just focus on the sound and watch your thoughts and come back and focus on the sound.
Thank you. 
focus on the sound. Watch your emotions and focus on the sound.
we're done. So how was that for everyone? Do share with me how you felt um, as you're focusing on the uh, sound of the Tibetan singing bowl. As I said earlier, because it is made out of seven metals, so you will hear different frequencies, and these uh, frequencies, if you focus on that, on these sounds, it has a very healing effect. So do share with me your experience um, as, as you know, we've been used to focusing on the breath around our nostrils. So this is something new, yeah? So um, yeah, do, do, do write in the comment section. So as you're writing, I will uh, again read out to all of you my entry for yesterday's gratitude journal. Okay, so here you go. So I'm saying I'm grateful that I have Dettol spray to disinfect. I'm grateful for hand sanitizers and I'm grateful to have avocados um, almost daily. Yeah, because I'm vegetarian, so, and uh, I've not been feeling too well lately, so I thought avocados would be a comfort food for me. So I'm very grateful for all of that. So do share with me what you're grateful, um, what you're grateful with, and uh, as well, share with me about this singing bowl meditation, yeah? Uh, feels good with, uh, Christina says, feels good with the sound of the bowl, peaceful. Yes, that is, yes, it has a very soothing effect. It has a very soothing effect. If you have um, headphones, you can wear it and then let that vibration permeate your body. And it's very, very relaxing. It's, it's very good. Uh, hi, Jenny. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Hi, Pastor Albert. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Yiling. Okay, um, yeah, so definitely. And I think some of you told me last week that you, for some reason, you were, you were tearing and uh, there were certain emotions that came up for you. It does have that effect because what, this, what the vibrations do is that they, they will actually uh, heal certain chakras uh, in your body, so it, they will they will actually align it. They will realign your chakras, and as a result, because we do have certain uh, emotional baggage that is you know that, that that we kind of lock in, and a lot of times it's in our heart chakra. So when you release it, it will you will have bouts of tears and some and for certain people, um, emotions will arise. Yeah, so it's very very healing. Great. Um, Corinne says, it is just awesome. Soothing and peaceful. Penny, love it. Feel the moment pass so swiftly. Yeah. So usually sound bathing meditation would last for, you know, half an hour to an hour um, when you're physically here. So what we do is we will use this, we will hit the bowls and we'll put it over your various chakras. Yeah. And again, you will feel very, very relaxed. So, you know, if you're very stress at work or with your family, whatever it is that you're stressed with, sound bathing meditation is um, extremely, extremely effective for that. Yeah. So Kotlin says, felt better compared to focus on light. Somehow meditation on sound feels more effective and peaceful. Do you know why Kotlin is because of the vibration? That's why when you do your mantra recitation, it has similar effects. Yeah, because different, different mantras will, will focus on different aspects um, of our mind. So if you recite mantras on wisdom, then it will, the vibration of the sound will have a similar effect, whereby it will actually enhance the circulation of the qi flowing uh, in, you know, around your mind, around your brain area, and it will have effects of increase of memory, uh, you'll be more eloquent, and um, you'd be a lot sharper, you know, a, a heightened sense of awareness. It has all these effects. And uh, there's certain mantras where, whereby they focus on compassion. And if you recite it long enough, you again, you see, because these, these mantra recitations will actually, uh, it's, 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 it's a vibration that's caused by a recitation that will actually 
manipulate or move the qi to certain parts of a chakra. So if you're if you're reciting mantras on compassion, then what it'll do is it will stimulate the qi to move and circulate around your heart chakra, which is around here. Okay, and there are reports for, from certain people that when you recite that, uh, there'll be bouts of anger arising because the antidote for uh, anger is compassion. Yeah, so so you can do you so you can have similar effects when you when you do mantra recitation, and you can also have similar effects when you do when you hit this Tibetan singing bowl. All right, so that's how it works. Uh, okay, let me see who else. Uh, Wubi says less thoughts arising and can focus better with the singing bowl sounds. Felt very peaceful. Grateful to you, Jay, for introducing this singing bowl to us. You're most welcome, Wubi. Uh, Sharon, it's easier to focus with a singing bowl. Feels peaceful and weightless. There's some mild discomfort around my heart area. Love this. Um, again, the discomfort around your heart area, is it because of the singing bowl or you're having discomfort around your heart area recently? So if it's because of a singing bowl, again, it's because of the vibration. It's helping you release certain emotional baggage that has been you know, that you have been carrying it around your heart chakra. So relax, focus on, on, on the uh, sound and just let the emotion arise. Again, watch the uh, emotion and focus back on the singing bowl, okay? On the sound of the singing bowl. Uh, again, uh, do not uh, focus on the emotions, yeah? Remember when we're doing our single point of our single pointed meditation, whatever thoughts may arise, whatever emotions or, or aches and pains and itches and all that, you watch it, but you bring your focus back on the breath. But in this case, it will be the sound of the singing bowl. Okay? Because every time when you start analyzing your other experiences, you actually give it more energy to it and, and you will actually make, you know, you actually. Uh, further enhance it and that's and that's something that we do not want okay so waiting uh, good session at first juggled a bit within focusing on breathing and the sound calming great hi Dr. May thank you for tuning in uh, Cockman gratitude good weather and being and able to meditate together wonderful great uh, gratitude grateful for avocados I agree <laughs> yes and I see that you've been feasting away uh, every day with your family. That's wonderful. It's a great time to spend quality time with your family, Christina. So I'm, I'm glad that you're able, you're able to do that during this lockdown. Grateful for my therapeutic dog and grateful for fresh food. Glenn, JP, I was doing your recorded sound meditation during the week and I was shaking and trembling. Why is it so? Again, it's because you're allowing the sound to permeate through your body and perhaps you've been uh, holding on to a lot of uh, emotions in the past so whatever happens just do not focus on that sometimes the body will have a certain reaction because there are all these pent up emotions uh, so again relax and breathe breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out as you're doing that focus on the sound Okay, just breathe normally, yeah? Just breathe normally. <sighs> breathe normally and focus on the sound. Whatever happens, be it your physical reaction or be it your emotional reaction, just watch it and focus on the sound. Do that, okay? Do that and just let whatever happens, happens. Okay, and then do share with me, okay? So again, this is a good sign that your body is uh, relaxing and allowing whatever negativities it is that you've been harboring on to actually come out. So when it does come out, again, focus very strongly on the sound. Yeah, if you're meditating on the breath, again, focus very strongly on, this, on the nostril area and let whatever reactions come out. Okay, do share with me if that helps. Yeah, Glian. Uh, Carmen, it was nice and peaceful. Felt the vibration and frequency most, mostly around my ears because I think my senses ha was heightened there. Kept having to catch myself though because I kept anticipating 
when you'd hit, <laughs> when you'd next hit the bull. <laughs> yes. Now, again, that will, that will happen, Carmen. So again, focus on the sound. Focus on the sound. The mind will have that tendency to, to, you know, to, want to, to always want to anticipate. Oh, is it going to hit it louder? Is it going to be softer? Is there a certain rhythm? Or there's no rhythm? What is it? That's how our mind has been conditioned to operate all the time. So, it's, so instead of focusing on the mechanics, again, we focus on the sound. Come what may. Okay, every time you hear it, you hear it. If it fades, it fades. We do not analyze it. We just focus on it. And that's the key here. Okay, focusing on the sound without analysis. Focusing on the sound without analysis. That's very good. Because every time when you analyze, you're actually thinking about it. So you're not focusing. Okay, you're allowing your mind to run amok and do what you're used to doing. So when you still the mind by just focusing on the sound, that is the key here. Yeah, so it's still single pointed meditation, but instead of the breath, it's now the sound. So I'm trying to get you used to that so that you can focus on anything you like later on because you have been, you've, been trained, you've been training your mind to be so flexible that you can focus on, let's say, a candle, a cup, uh, a, you know, a holy image, uh, your breath, um, your watch, anything, okay? Um, even you can play soothing music and you focus on the sound of it. You don't sing along with it, but you focus on the sound. So it's training the mind to be flexible, to focus on anything that you, uh, that you would like to focus on, yeah? So, and you can apply that technique to your work. So if you are working and you need to focus on something at hand, well, you have, to, you have the skill already, okay? Or be it your children, your spouse, anything that you, like, that you would like to focus on. Yeah, so that is actually very good. Because otherwise, if you're still used to just the breathing, and there is a tendency that, you, that because you're so used to focusing on the breathing, sometimes when you tell your mind to focus on something else, it's a bit of, um, it takes time to adjust, okay? And that's, and that's how our mind works. We, you know, we're so used to just being fixated with a certain way that we do things, yeah? So they are good and they are, I mean, it's, it's both positive and negative. It's just how we train our mind to be more flexible so that you can just focus on anything that you like. And that is the next level, okay? Dr. Hank, felt 15 minutes quite fast. While meditation with singing bowl, great. Grateful to reconnect with everyone here. Grateful for another long weekend. Grateful for the jobs done last whole week. Oh, that's, that's nice. So what, we, ha we have Monday, Tuesday off? Is that, is that the public holiday? Because I'm totally out of touch because I've been in Kachar Forest Retreat um, all this while, so it doesn't make a difference for me. <laughs> Loss, I've lost track of our weekends and weekdays. Uh, waiting, grateful for getting shaver, grateful for the herbal soup, grateful for doing incense offerings. Wonderful. Colin, we're here to Roger Seekers to look at the various bowls available. Do the smaller ones have same sound effect versus the bigger ones? No. The different, every bowl is going to be different. Do you know why? Because this is not machine made. This is actually handmade. They actually pound it. Okay, it's all handmade. So every bowl is going to sound different, okay? Every bowl is going to sound different. You can choose whatever, uh, whichever sound that, you, that is soothing for you. It's very, very personal. It's very, very personal. There's no, you know, best bowl for you. It's which, whichever sound you think um, is soothing. So, Okay, and Yiman says, triggered emotions and tears again. At one point, thoughts of Rinpoche came up to the mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Yiman says, I'm grateful for the following, to have a suitable table to do my daily prayers, to have joined the two online pujas organized by Kachara a few days ago. Thank you, Kachara. 
Number three, to have a thoughtful colleague from another team who regularly shares important updates relating to our job with me. That's wonderful, uh, Iman. Again, uh, Iman, your emotions have been triggered. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. I've, uh, I feel that because you have been holding on to a lot of your emotions due to your reactions to certain people and certain situations in your past. So now that you have been following my sessions uh, for more than a month already, uh, you can practice focusing on your intention for the day. If you don't have one already by now, do have that, okay? So that throughout the day, when you just focus on your intentions, um, and whatever, and every time when you want to react to a certain situation or to a certain person, now that you have the tools of single-pointed meditation, you focus on your intention. Focus on the intention, yeah? And, and whatever happens has happened. So remember my, my uh, conversation that we cannot control what others do to us and we cannot control situations but we can always control how we choose to react and that's very very important that's very very important there is no right or wrong okay um because well all of us have a different level of wisdom a different level of maturity a different level of insight we have different backgrounds different mind uh, mindsets all of us uh, behave in a certain way and there's no why and why not and that's how people are even for ourselves even for ourselves we may have the best of intentions to do certain things and some people will always may view or perceive you as having ulterior motives and deep down you don't have any so you can fight all you want at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Because why? Because it will take time for people to really understand how you are. Yeah? And for those, and for those people who continuously hurt others, well, again, that is, it shows how much, how unhappy they are. Because for people who always make others suffer, it is because that's their, that's their world, that's their comfort zone. That's their comfort zone. So, the, so because, that, because, because that's their comfort zone and they're used to that kind of environment. So every time when they are with another person, they will inflict suffering onto others. That's their comfort zone. There's no why and why not. That, that, see, that's their conditioning. So when we understand how the human mind works, that's where we develop empathy. And when, when we develop empathy, we become more patient. <clears throat> we become more patient and we become more accepting and more forgiving because we understand that the person is suffering a lot more. Because if, there, if you're not in pain, you will not be doing things to create pain for others. You won't. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah? So instead of reacting, and asking why we focus on intention and because we realize that they are in more pain than us, we empathize and go, oh, it's okay. You go, because that is what they're used to. That is what they're used to. And that helps. It helps me personally um, because I'm very judgmental. I used to be extremely judgmental um, and, and, and it hurts. And I always ask, why, 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 why? And there's really no why. That's how the human mind is. Yeah, so we learn to just take a step back and empathize and forgive and focus on our intention. I think that'll be more, more constructive, okay? So uh, enhance all your questions, which I will address very shortly, okay? I hope that helps, yeah, Yiman? So it's a very good sign that you're tearing up. Let it all come out, watch it, but focus on the sound, okay? Jacinta, grateful for cool weather, grateful, grateful Milo and Biscuits, and thankful that I can spend time for reading. That's wonderful, Jacinta. Glian, you're most welcome. Corinne, grateful for a less busy week and tasks accomplished smoothly. Grateful can join meditation, uh, join meditate together. 
Uh, Jacinta, I do have a question too, but it may sound weird. You said meditation can help us relax and focus better, and yes, I agree with it. But instead of having good sleep, I'm not able to sleep. I'm, I'm like sleeping less, but not really tired. Just feel like I don't need to sleep more. Yes, there are many people who meditate. And, at the, and because when you meditate, when we meditate on a regular basis, you will notice that you sleep, that you tend to sleep less. It is very true. Because when you're meditating, it is, um, you're very focused on maybe your breath or the sound or whatever it is. It actually relaxes your entire body. It calms your entire body. So as a result, you know, your body will not need to rest so, uh, so much as you would normally do. So yes, there are many people who, who meditate who actually sleep less. Yeah, that's why the monks and nuns in, in the monasteries, those who meditate, you, you do hear that they you know, sleep for what, four hours? And they're good enough. Yeah, and there are some uh, high lamas, I was told, that hardly sleep. They can just go on for days without sleeping. Well, I guess it's because they, they meditate a lot. Yeah. So yes, I have heard of that. Okay, uh, Yiman. Uh, uh, do you think we shall go to the shop to choose? Okay. Uh, okay. So fun, lots of thoughts and emotions this week. The sound of the singing bowl, so soothing and able to focus better this week. Wonderful, so fun. Um, Doreen, Cat Stephen, hi, morning. Hi, Terence. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, so I will answer some of your questions from Yiman. Uh, there were a few questions. Now, this is from two weeks ago. You asked, are, me are mental affliction and emotional baggage the same? Uh, they are related, but they're not the same. Okay? Mental affliction arises from distorted mental perception. Distorted mental perception. Okay? So they will, mental affliction will come out because of how we perceive situations and how we perceive uh, people. Okay, so, so what, what arises? Attachment, anger, pride, ignorance, doubt. Okay, wrong views. Okay, these are the root causes for uh, disturbing emotions and attitudes. Baggage. Emotional baggage is when we hold on to these reactions and we suppress it and we shelve it. Okay, we suppress it and we shelve it. And we say we'll deal with it. And then we kind of never deal with it. And that latent uh, emotion is still there. Okay, because afflictions may arise due to our wrong views. But if you address it, and then you go, okay, there's no point holding on to it, then you let go. So the emotional afflictions can arise but the emotional baggage is where you hold on to it and you replay it in your mind again and again and again. And certain things and certain situations or, or certain people will trigger that, that situation and you keep replaying it in your mind. And you ask, why me? What happened? Why, why, why this? We always question why, 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 why? Okay, so and that's because we keep putting we're not able to come to terms with it because we don't understand. So these sessions that, that, that we have together is actually very good. You know why? It's because when we understand how the mind works, that it will answer a lot of the whys. Okay? Again, it's the why of how, of how the mind works. But you, but, and then there are other... Uh, sessions where you talk about how situations work, the law of nature. Remember I keep saying the law of nature and how it's so unpredictable? That's, that's nature. It's very unpredictable. And how things are, not, are, are very impermanent. Yeah? Everything is very impermanent. So all these, when we understand, we will be able to accept because instead of fighting it and, 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 and keep asking why, which will make us crazy and become emotionally 
driven and even more confused, that helps. So that's why knowledge is very important. Every time when we, when we hear something, we think about it, we contemplate on it, and then when we have a deeper understanding of what we have learned, when, and when things start to make sense, that's where we are able to let go. Okay, so you have to combine the both. First, con learn to control the mind so that when the emotions arise, you can just watch it with the clarity of the mind. Watch it, dissect it, and ask, where is that coming from? And then you apply the knowledge. It's like medicine. You apply it and you go, okay, that's what I learned and that's how the human mind is and that's how the human mind works and that's how and that's what I heard about the law of nature, how things are so unpredictable and very disappointing many times. Okay, so instead of replaying that situation, you have truly embraced it and, under, and, and because, because of the hours you spent uh, watching sessions like this or reading, and you go, okay, it makes sense. And it becomes easy for you to just go, okay, that's it. There's no point holding on to it because you have embraced it. So it's a very, it's very, very powerful way to heal ourselves. Very, very powerful. Yeah. All of us have emotional baggage because, well, nobody, we didn't go to school for, you know, uh, and, and, and we were never taught to handle situations and our emotions. This, our schools never taught us. And that's, that's, that's the problem there. Okay? So I hope that explains about, emotion, uh, about mental affliction and emotional baggage. Uh, Iman asks, how can we work on our mental affliction, such as impatience and desire? Well, again, like I said, well, for impatience, when we start to understand how the human mind works, that's where we start to be more forgiving. Because why? Everybody needs time to transform. How much effort we put in will determine how fast a person transforms. Yeah, if we put in 10% and we expect 100% transformation, that, that, that is illogical. If you put in 10%, you just get 10%. If you put in 50%, you get 50 for, uh, 50%. So if we ourselves need time to change our negative habits, why not the other people? Why not? So when we start to, to meditate and increase our mindfulness, we become more empathetic. And that will help with our patience. It will help with our anger. It will help with many, many things. You know, it will help with us stopping ourselves from um, reacting. Remember my analogy that when a storm comes and you go, you can choose. You know, oh, I'm supposed to have a picnic outside, I'm supposed to have a garden party outside, and a storm comes. So either you hold on to, uh, you know, to the fact that it's ruined your plans and you keep asking why and you get all flustered and angry, or you just go, okay, well, that's the law of nature. There's nothing you can do about it. You just move everything inside. Just, just do something else. So you always have a choice how you choose to react. Same thing. Okay, that's a simple analogy, but if you think about it, that's how life is. That is how life is. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. No right or wrong. Okay, so, and then desire. Well, desire. The only way that you can work on lessening your desires. Desires is not just sexual desire. It can be desire of beautiful things, desire to travel, desire to eat, desire to uh, always get attention, desire for, for, uh, for having face all the time. Whatever it is that, you're, that you desire, that, you, you know, that you're attached to, the only way is to wean yourself from these attachments. That's the only way. Because remember I said, because when we, are, when we focus too much on our desires, it becomes an addiction. And how do you know that? 
because if you don't, if you do not put attention to you to that specific desire, you will have a withdrawal uh, symptom. Be it you feel very unsettled, you're sweating, you know, uh, you you you're, you will be very emotionally driven. Many things will happen, you know, and you just have to do it. That's because you're addicted to that certain attachment. That's it. That's how the mind works. Yeah? So the only way is to wean it, is to wean those attachments, just like how, uh, you know, certain um, people who are addicted to, let's say, cocaine. They can't help it. Yeah, they can't help it. So the only way is to, to put them into rehab. Just so for us, same thing, do, do a bit of rehab. That's why retreats are very, very effective. What, what is a retreat? A retreat is you retreat yourself from all these distractions and you go into a center, um, you know, it's any, any ashrams or any spiritual center and you just uh, stay there for a week, two weeks, a month and you wean yourself from all these distractions, whatever they are, you know, it can be shopping, eating, watching TV, playing video games, whatever it is that you must do on a regular basis. Because if you don't do it, you will feel very unhappy, very unsettled. It will shake your equilibrium. Whatever it is, that is um, an addiction already. Okay? So that is one of the ways that you start working on it. I hope that helps, Iman. And... You have another question uh, from last week, Iman. You said that what are the methods to acquire or improve our empathy towards others? Sometimes we may not even know that someone is going through some problems, usually emotional, which if we do, we would like to help them. The most worrying is when someone we know or care about is actually going through some emotional turmoil but it was not visible to us because they're covering it up. And when we realize it, it may be too late. Okay, let me repeat. What are the methods on, this is a question on empathy. What are the methods to acquire or improve our empathy towards others? Well, meditate. Because when we meditate, we actually train our, ourselves to be more mindful. Yeah, why? Because you're, because you're training your mind to focus out, be it your breath or be it a singing bowl the sound of a singing bowl or whatever external uh, items that you would like to focus on you're focusing outwards when you do that enough you will notice that your level of awareness start to increase and when it increases that's where you'll be able to pick up signs of people around you who are happy unhappy or have been unusual you will be able to do that. And that takes time, okay? Um, you say sometimes we may not even know that someone is going through some problems, usually emotional, which we, if we do, we would like to help them. Of course, of course. See, because most of the times we're so distracted with our daily lives and we just really don't sit down take a, take, you know, and really watch and be observant to people around us and even situations, okay? We don't. So that's why meditation is actually very good. It will take you a while. The more you put in, the more effort you put into to your meditational practices, the more the more you will see your mind, your level of awareness increase. Okay, so that is how you do it. Okay, I hope that <clears throat> I hope that answers your question, Iman. It is a process. You cannot say that you want to increase your level of awareness immediately. You will not be able to. It will. It is a pr process. So if you put it 100% <clears throat> into your daily meditation, you will, get, you will have very fast results. Yeah? So do share with me. That's why consistency in the meditation is very, very good. Very, very good. Okay, so we, have, we have to wrap up already. I will see you guys tomorrow uh, morning again, 8.30 uh, a.m. Malaysian time. Again, thank you very much for tuning in and have a great Saturday. See ya.